ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Welcome to MOOC course on applications of interactomics using genomics and proteomics technologies. We have discussed there are many ways of printing features on the microarray based platforms. Especially self free expression based systems could be very powerful to generate proteins on the chip. In this light <coughs> NAPA was one of the powerful technologies which we discussed with Dr. Josh Lebert. Additionally, the advent of many innovative ways of producing proteins on the chip without need to express and purify them. And in collaboration with University of Washington with Dr. Pradeep Rathod and his group, we have tried to utilize one of the self free expression based platform which is based on the wheat germ extracts. And one of the PhD student in the lab Apurva Venkatesh she performed a malaria based project using this novel protein microarray based technology. So, today we are going to talk about applications of protein microarrays especially how it can be used for research on malaria using a high throughput microarray based platform which is also based on the self free expression. This experiments were conducted in our proteomics lab and Apurva is going to give you some insight about how to perform such experiment and interpret data to make it much more meaningful insights from these kind of high throughput experiments. So, let us welcome Apurva for this lecture on microarray technologies and its application in malaria research. I am Apurva Venkatesh T A for this course. And in today's lecture and in the next lecture, we are going to speak about microarray technology and one of its applications. Before we can, uh, we go on to what we can do, we are going to see how to perform the particular experiment. And in today's class, I am going to take you to the lab and I am going to show you step wise how the experiment is performed in a laboratory. So, let us move on to the uh, proteomics laboratory at IIT Bombay. So, in today's lecture, I will be showing you a microarray experiment. Uh, to study antibody levels of malaria positive patients to parasite antigens. For this particular experiment today, first I will show you how to set up the uh, experiment, how to assemble the slides and then I will walk you through the various steps one by one. We will first begin uh, by assembling the slides in the slide cassette. So before which I would first like to show you how our slide looks. So, it is very important to know that all the slides have to be stored in a light proof box. Normally slides are stored in a desiccator. I have a light proof box here and I have my slides uh, in this box. I am going to first show you one of the slides and I am going to close the box. So this is basically how one microarray slide looks. If you notice this slide, there are 8 sub arrays in the slide. So let us call this sub array 1. And there are 8 sub arrays like this in this particular slide. What is important to know here is that uh, the proteins printed on this uh, slide are basically parasite proteins. So, uh, so Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax are two malaria parasites that cause malaria in humans. Of course, there are others as well, but these, these are the two most dominant parasites. So, in this particular chip, we have both Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax proteins which are printed on this chip. Now, how these proteins are printed, will I will talk to you in the next lecture. Today, we will only speak about how this particular experiment is done in the lab. So, what is important here to know is that each of these sub arrays can probe one patient serum, which means that at the same time, I can study the responses of eight patients using one slide. So, that is the uh, advantage of this uh, particular setup. So, the most important thing in this particular experiment is the slide setup because if the slide is not set properly then there could be leakage and, and any small error in a microarray experiment can actually cause erroneous results at the end. 
which will be very difficult for us to interpret. The first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to set the slide in a in the slide holder. What I have here is basically the slide separator, which is going to separate each and every sub array, which I'm going to now call pad. I'm going to call one sub array as one pad. This slide holder has to be placed really carefully on the slide edge to edge. It's important to not apply too much pressure in the center or in the corners. You have to apply equal pressure throughout. This is now attached to the slide. Make sure that this is set properly and it is firm and tight. So once this is done, we will now clamp this up using these clamps. We have now successfully clamped this slide. Now what we need to do is place it in the slide holder. So this is the slide holder and you will see here that this slide holder can now take three slides, which means that if one slide can probe eight patient sera and this slide holder can take three slides, which means that one shot, 24 patient sera can be screened. For today, I'm going to take only one of these slides and I'm going to place it now in the holder. So this is how we place it in the holder. And I will close the holder. So this completes our slide setup. The next thing we need to do is to set our reagents. So first of all, what all do we need for the microarray experiment? First thing we need is a blocking buffer and the second thing we need is an E. coli lysate. So this is an E. coli lysate which is in uh, the powder form and then we have blocking buffer here which I will use throughout the experiment. So I need to make 10% of this E. coli lysate in blocking buffer. So what I will do first is I am going to take 1 ml of blocking buffer and add it to my E. coli which is in the powder form. So I am adding 1 ml of the blocking buffer into the E. coli lysate and what I am going to do is I am going to mix it really well. This E. coli lysate which is 1 ml, I am going to add it to 9 ml of blocking buffer. So this is going to give me 10% E. coli lysate in blocking buffer. So this step is basically required for incubating our serum samples. Before we start the hybridization, to remove any anti-E. coli non-specific antibodies from the serum. So now this is my 10% E. coli lysate and I'm going to place it back in ice. So once you've positioned the chamber onto the slide and the slide into the slide holder, we're going to take one X blocking buffer and we're going to add this onto the chip and we are going to incubate this chip for 30 minutes. Preferably, it's better to carry out this using a multi-channel pipette. But now that we are going to have only one slide, I am going to use a normal pipette to add 200 microliter of blocking buffer into the slide. So what I normally do is I add blocking buffer for an extra 30 seconds in alternate pads. This is basically to check if this setup is fine and if there is any sort of leakage. And now I am going to place it on the rocker. So when I check this, I see that there is no leakage. So now what I will do is I will add the blocking buffer in the other pads. It's important to make sure that there are no bubbles in this process.
So once this is done, we'll now carefully place this back on the rocker for 30 minutes. So while we are rehydrating uh, this, our slide with the blocking buffer, meanwhile, what we'll do, we will incubate our serum samples with the 10% E. coli which we had prepared previously. So these are my serum samples which are in cryo vials. We need to make a dilution of 1 is to 100, which means that I will take 99 microliter of the E. coli lysate in blocking buffer and I'm going to take 1 microliter of serum. So now because each pad can take 200 microliter volume, what we'll do is we'll take 2 microliter serum in 198 microliter of 10% E. coli lysate. I have already aliquoted the 10% E. coli lysate. Now what I'll do is add 2 microliter of serum samples into this. So usually this is also done uh, using a multi-channel pipette or sometimes there are also automated ways to do this. But since we are again dealing with only one chip, I am using a normal pipette. So that way we have now incubated 2 microliter of 8 serum samples in E. coli lysate and we will incubate this for 30 minutes in the same platform rocker. So now it's time to add our serum samples to the slide. So the first thing we need to do is to aspirate the blocking buffer which is already present on our slide. For this, I'll take the multi-channel pipette. So this step has to be performed really carefully. As you'll see, these are really fine tips which have to be used to avoid any scratches. It's important to keep the pipette at the very end of the slide this way and then you aspirate really slowly. The other important thing is that the slide should never dry up. So it's always good to keep a little blocking buffer behind. As you'll see, the blocking buffer has been completely removed and now immediately we'll add our samples. So this is the 50 microliter pipette. I'm going to mix the serum sample once before adding it to the slide. So once this is done, we'll add the serum samples to the slide. So we have totally added 200 microliter. of serum samples which have been diluted in 10% of E. coli lysate. So to avoid any uh, kind of evaporation, what we'll do is we'll place a foil over the lid and then we we'll place this whole slide on a moist towel. We'll then place this slide um, overnight in a cold room which is at 4 degrees. So after overnight incubation, the next thing we need to do is aspirate this solution just like we did previously and we're going to wash this pad with tween buffer. I'm not going to show the washing steps now because it is similar to how we aspirate it. The same way you aspirate and then you wash it and then you aspirate again. This has to be done thrice. This is our secondary antibody. What we'll do is we will dilute this 200 times. I'm going to take 1 microliter of the secondary antibody in 199 microliter of buffer and I will calculate this for 8 pads. So basically I have already calculated the volume required for 8 pads and I'm going to simply add 200 microliter of secondary antibody to each pad. It's important to not scratch the pad and also as I've mentioned earlier, the pad should never dry. So 
So once this step is done, we will again incubate this light on a platform rocker. Okay, so now what we have done is we have incubated this light with a secondary antibody and now we'll incubate it with a tertiary antibody. Uh, this process is again done after washing this light thrice with tween buffer. The dilution for this antibody is similar to the previous one, 1 in 200 and I've again calculated accordingly. So now we'll add 200 microliter of tertiary antibody which is a streptavidvidin conjugate to the slide. It's very important to close the slide and wrap it with foil immediately as this tertiary antibody is light sensitive. So once this is completely wrapped, we'll again place this on a platform rocker. I would like to mention that after this step, every other step has to be performed very carefully and we should try to avoid light as much as possible. So after incubation with tertiary antibody, we are going to now wash the slides just like previously with tween buffer. So every time you add tween buffer, you place it on a high speed rocker for 5 minutes and then you wash it again. So this, is, this process is done 6 times. Now it's time to remove the slide from the slide chamber for scanning. So I will carefully remove the slide from the chamber. I'm removing the clamps. You have to be careful not to scratch the pad surface. So we slowly remove the chamber from the slide and then we we'll immediately transfer the slide into the slide holder so this is basically distilled water to wash the slide before we scan it so we have a slide holder with the slide and a balance which we will now centrifuge at 2000 rpm for 5 minutes. So we are going to now scan the slide. As you will see the slide is dry after centrifugation. We will place the slide carefully in the scanner with the barcode side facing downward. Now we'll scan the slide. hope you're familiar with how to perform the microarray experiment. So it is not difficult, it is just a little tedious and there are certain precautions which you need to take while performing this particular experiment. So basically it's very important to store the slides in a light proof box and in a desiccated cabinet if you have it. QC of each sample has already been done I'm sure but it's important to ensure that it has been done uh, because these are all IVTT spots on the, on the chip and they have to be checked once before you receive them. And it's important to probe one, no sera control in every batch. I've already shown you that, but it's very important in probably in every slide, if you can probe one, it's great. If not, at least in every batch, there has to be one, no sera control, uh, which is nothing but your blocking buffer plus 10% E. coli lysate. The pads must never ever go dry. Otherwise, you'll actually see huge background noise, which is very difficult to then um, uh, later on eliminate. Uh, also, you have to use autoclave tips all the time and um, uh, and the last thing is to label the slides very carefully otherwise towards the end of the experiment you will never know which slide 
was uh, used for which uh, for probing which samples and especially when you have a large number of samples like 200 and 300 it becomes very confusing at the end in the next class i will teach you how to analyze data using uh, excel i will show you how to uh, what you do after you export data from your microarray scanner this will be very helpful for a few of you who are just starting uh, uh, a microarray experiment in the laboratory see you next week thank you I'm sure now you are convinced there are many ways of producing the contents on the chip in different ways both cell based or cell free expression based manner. Cell free expression provides lot more flexibility that you can generate large number of proteins of interest without need to purify them. And especially in this case when we want to do a research on malaria we had different pathogens different parasites from which these genes were the clones were made from falciparum and vivax and they were printed on the chip and thought was can we express them using in vitro transcription translation mix and make the protein on the chip and then use those to screen the patient's biological sample. I hope you got some understanding about how to perform a micro experiment in our proteomics lab which was demonstrated today. You also understood every step is so crucial in high throughput biology if you are looking at every step meticulously your protocols your SOPs your quality control checks are in place then only you can obtain a result which could be reproducible and meaningful. In next lecture we will continue our discussion about using such approach and application and how to then analyze the data and make more meaningful insights from this kind of experiments. Thank you very much.